And then you check the MCV and the size is smaller, okay? And you call it what? It's going to be below 80 and you call it microcytic. So once you take a blood, there's decreased hemoglobin and they say MCV is low. Already the first thing should pop up to your mind, although you won't be sure, but What's going to be the first cause that would pop to your mind? Iron deficiency. Very good. Very good. Iron deficiency. Definitely iron deficiency. Okay. So you don't have enough of iron and it counts for all of them, all of the microcytic ones. There's something with iron. There's still one special one. Okay. It's the thalassemia. That's a, like with the thalassemia, you've got a mutation of the LLS so and you're not, not producing the right hemoglobin. The other ones that are uh, more common over here, of course, than thalassemia, which is very common around military and sea and, you know. So in the main three ones, we're going to talk about iron and somehow that it's not available or there's something with, with iron. OK, so and the way how you should look at it is that I'm not producing uh, hemoglobin as I should because there's not enough of iron. And that's why the cells are small. OK, they divide normally, but they're not producing enough of hemoglobin. So in this case, the production itself is decreased. OK, production is decreased because uh, there's not enough of the important uh, part of the erythrocytes. And that's why also in most of the cases, the reticulocytes will be decreased. OK, but the you don't look so much for reticulocytes over here because basically you expect that, but the MCV, the small MCV, that's the important thing. And the main ones over here you look for is, of course, the sideropenic anemia. That means not enough of iron. Then you have anemia of chronic diseases, very important one, okay? Then you have sideroblastic, it has many causes. It also is related to malignancy at the end. Okay, it could be inherited, acquired. You can put B6 deficiency over here as well, but very common, and we're gonna go deeper in it, but also remember, for example, alcohol. And there, there are many causes, but we're gonna still talk about it. And then you got the thalassemias, okay? So thalassemias mainly would be belong over here. One comment with the with the anemias of chronic diseases, don't forget, they can be also normocytic. Okay, in most of the cases they're microcytic, but they can be also normocytic, okay? So the size could be normal still. You can put them over here. Anemia of chronic diseases as well. Okay? Yeah. Good. And Maybe I'm going to go deeper in the microcytic now, okay? Not to go farther. So, and I'm going to jump back over here. So, I'm going to put the, the microcytic over here. And we're going to go through, so I'm going to tell you more, more special things about it. And basically, remember, most of these has to do something with iron. And basically, over here, you do the iron panel. That means, and you already mentioned it today, and they all are small. These diseases produce small erythrocytes, so they're microcytic. And if you do a iron study, which is you look for iron in the blood and then you look for ferritin and transferrin and total iron binding capacity, the combination of levels of these three or four, which you look for, will basically then tell you at the end what type of anemia this is. So in microcytic anemias, the iron studies are crucial to divide them even deeper and look for the cause, okay? So I'm gonna draw it in a bit in a different way now. I'm gonna put it from up, but it's just the same for as we talked about. And 
Of course, first we're going to talk about the most common one. That's the sideropenic anemia. Okay, so sideropenic anemia. So it's one of the microcytic anemias. Okay. So, and we know already from the pathophysiological point of view, it's because there's decreased production. Okay. In all of these cases, there's decreased production. Okay. And sideropenic anemia means what? So you're going to do the iron studies and still maybe I should remind it to you a bit. So you check for iron. Okay. And I'm going to simplify it. And that's going to be decreased, obviously, in the blood. And then you look for ferritin, okay? And how is it with ferritin? What's ferritin good for? Ferritin very well tells you, uh, sort of indirectly, how much iron you got. And if it's increased, you have lots of iron. If it's decreased, you have not enough of iron. So naturally, this is going to be decreased in most of the cases. Because ferritin is in the cells, it protects the cell from iron, okay? But if there's lots of it, it also is released into the bloodstream, okay? So ferritin is in, um, let's say, hepatocytes, enterocytes, macrophages, all the reticle endothelial systems, etc., etc. And you have lots of iron that is stored in the cells, ferritin is going to be high. So it tells you you got enough of iron in a way. Unfortunately, ferritin is also, and it has to do with that, it's a acute phase reactant. So watch out. In one third of the patients, although they have definitely sideropenic anemia, one third can be masked by inflammation. So if you have some response, you know, inflammatory response, liver is boosted up, it produces lots of ferritin as a acute phase reactant, and it's going to be masked. So it, it could be normal, okay? So watch out, it could be tricky with ferritin in case of, although you're having definitely sideropenic anemia, ferritin could be normal only because it's boosted by the acute inflammation somewhere, okay? Well, what else you check? You check transferrin. And transferrin is the molecule that moves the iron within, within the blood from one tissue to another one. So from enterocyte, it brings the, the iron to the liver and also to the bone marrow and gives it to macrophages or gives it to hepatocytes, okay? And in case you don't have enough of iron, the thing is, it's going to be boosted up because it's like the body is hungry for the iron, okay? So transferrin, on the other hand, is going to be high because you don't have enough of iron in the body. And TIBC is total iron binding capacity. It just tells you, remember, there are two seats on the transferrin for two irons, okay? And basically, it tells you that the seats are empty and that you are very hungry for iron. You need iron. So in classical sideropenic anemia, iron's going to be low in the blood, ferritin's going to be decreased, and transferrin's going to be increased. Moreover, as I told you, you don't have enough of iron. What does that mean? It means that the production is going to be very unsolid, very bad. And that's why, you know, some erythrocytes or still blasts, whatever blasts, erythroblasts in the bone marrow, they will get lots of iron and some less. And this depends on also a different size of the erythrocytes. So, uh, of course, uh, with MCV, you get an average one, but then you can look for, and you call this a red cell distribution width. And the thing you should understand is if uh, you have a healthy bone marrow, the red cells be very similar in size, okay? If everything is fine, you got enough of iron. But if you don't have enough of iron, they're going to be different sizes, more likely. So the erythrocyte is going to be one. Of, they're going to be all small, but some's going to be smaller and some not as small. So they're going to be many different sizes. So already, if you look on blood smear, they're going to have different sizes. So the red cell distribution width is going to be increased. Okay, so if you look on their normal distribution of a healthy production is going to be the green one healthy 
and this is the sideropenic anemia they're going to be if this is the size of the erythrocytes so the distribution what's going to be wider and by the way how it's going to be with erythropoietin in sideropenic anemia what do you think increased yes very good so it's increased obviously you're anemic the kidneys are hypoxic and they produce more EPO. And this has an impact not only on erythrocytes, but also on platelets, okay? So, because platelets they have, or the megacaricide, they have receptors for EPO as well. So remember, also you can check on platelets and they're gonna be increased, okay? Thrombocytes, yeah? So that's sideropenic anemia. So decreased iron, decreased ferritin in most of the cases and increased transferrin. Very good. So now we're going to jump to another very important, and this is crucial one. You should imagine all the patients that, well, not only, but you know, as you get older, it's more and more probable. And it's the anemia of chronic diseases. Anemia of chronic diseases. And over here, the main player in this game is a acute phase reactant called hepcidin. And if you would check the iron studies uh, or iron metabolism video, you get all the info on hepcidin. But remember, hepcidin is a acute phase reactant. And hepcidin, not only that, but it's a the main control of, let's say, iron intake from the duodenum. Okay? And if there is lots of hepcidin, it blocks the intake. And not only that, it also blocks the iron in the cells, in the hepatocytes, in the macrophages, in the bone marrow, and everywhere. So basically, if you have lots of hepcidin, you're going to have decreased levels of iron in the blood. So totally, in the body, you have lots of iron, but you cannot use it. And it's also blocked in the macrophages, which are in the niche of the bone marrow and that are actually giving the iron normally to erythrocytes or their precursors, I mean, okay? And now they keep it. They won't give it away. And so in case you have a chronic disease inflammation, you can have SLE, many, all, all the cancers you can think of. Man, if it's a chronic disease, and there's increased hepcidin, if it's a chronic inflammation, you know, bacteria, they just stimulate the macrophages to produce interleukin-6, and this causes the, the liver to produce lots of hepcidin. And in this case, the iron's going to be blocked in your body, in your cells. That's why there's going to be decreased production of uh, erythrocytes, and you're going to have microcytic anemia due to chronic diseases, because you don't have iron again, okay? And... Basically, the way how we look at it is, like evolutionary originally, maybe it was because really bacterial infections, which need iron as well. And this is like you're taking the iron from the bacteria so they cannot, let's say, multiply as well. So it could be sort of a unspecific fight mechanism against the bacteria, evolutionary, okay? But now, unfortunately, you have thousands of other inflammations not caused by by bacteria, and now you know that even if someone is fat has a chronic inflammation, you know. So hepcidin, now it turns against you in a way. And if you do the iron studies, how it's gonna be with iron? Well, iron's gonna be de decreased again in the blood, but what about ferritin? There's lots of it because it's in the cells, it's produced, it, it like protects, so there's lots of ferritin. And will you be hungry for iron? No. So the transferrin or TIBC is going to be decreased. Okay? But remember, with this one, it's really hard to cure. The only way how you can, or the proper way how you could cure it is treat the original disease. Get rid of the bacteria. Okay? Stop the SLE somehow. You know, cure the cancer. Because there is not many ways how to help these patients, how to solve this, okay? Because giving an iron won't help. You have lots of iron. It's just blocked. So you have to try to cure the original disease. Still, there could be one chronic disease with which you could help. There could be a problem also with EPO. 
well, only maybe in case it's combination of decreased EPO and a chronic inflammation, which is what in end stage renal disease. Over here, you can try to help it, but you could give EPO, but otherwise it won't help, okay? Otherwise, no, cure the disease, original disease. So that was anemia of chronic diseases, crucial one, okay? And now you shouldn't be surprised if someone has a chronic disease that he's gonna have anemia, okay? I mean, always it should be now combined. The same way as you looked someone who's failing with kidneys, already the anemia should immediately pop up to your brain with iron deficiency, obviously, always. And now with the chronic disease, don't be now surprised that someone has anemia in chronic diseases, okay? So another one is the sideroblastic one. So you find sideroblasts in the bone marrow and sidero means like blasts are full of iron. And as I said over here, again, it's microcytic anemia. And the sideroblastic is in a way, yeah, it has many causes. But the thing you see in sideroblasts are mitochondria full of iron. The iron is blocked over there. And it could be inherited by some mutation or acquired and I as I told you remember the most common cause is alcohol unfortunately alcohol is a common cause for other anemias as well also the macrocytic but over here remember one of the most common causes of sideroblastic anemia is alcohol you always forget that you never forget what lead yeah but this is not common lead okay so lead poisoning okay plumbum lead but remember, alcohol is the most important cause of sideroblastic anemia. And the way how you could test it, and now I'm getting bit already in a smear evaluation, but this is a pretty common question in USMLE, and you're the English student, so I want to mention that. Remember, you can test it for Prussian blue, and you love it from pathology, Prussian blue. So if you do a stain, you have to stain it with Prussian blue. And what you're going to see is a blue ring around still the nucleus. It's a blast. And those are the storages of iron. So Prussian blue. Special staining for Prussian blue. And you'll see like blue ring over here. That's the sideroblast. Okay. And... As I told you, yeah, it could be alcohol, but also, unfortunately, it's sort of related to malodysplastic syndrome. And some of the cases even end up like acute myeloid leukemia. So many causes, but remember, iron is within the sideroblast and it's blocked over there. Well, actually, lots of it is in the blood. So this is the only... <laughs> microcytic anemia where there is lots of iron in the blood okay there's lots of iron but the erythrocytes are small okay so if i'm going to take the blood that's the only one with increased iron in the blood and of course i have lots of storages of iron so there's going to be increased ferritin and i'm not hungry for that at all I don't need iron, so the transferrin is going to be very decreased. Okay, so this is the only study with actually increased iron. I have lots of iron in the blood. I have lots of storages in the cells. Yeah, but still I'm producing small and not enough of small erythrocyte. And it's because of this sideroblastic problem. So it's the problem in the bone marrow and in the production. Okay, yeah. Well, and the last example is thalassemia. So, so thalassemia, and remember there's alpha and beta, but I won't go deep into it because you have got a detailed video on that. Remember, alpha is more like common in Asia. Beta is the one like around Mediterranean Sea or the ancestors from the Mediterranean Sea. I think, for example, Pete Sampras had it even. It's a famous tennis player, but I don't know if you know him. And anyways, I won't go deep into it. We got no time. You got four alas for alpha. And basically the problem and two alas only for beta thalassemia. And basically over here, you 
you very much look for the traits. So that means not severe cases. If it's a severe case, those are the major ones, then you know it from the childhood that they got a big spleen and they have blood problems all the time. So they got anemia, you, you know it. But you look for the hidden ones, for the traits, okay? That's the one, you know, at 20 years now he comes, he has anemia, you don't know what to do. Oh, it's a small uh, erythrocyte. Oh, it could be thalassemia. And basically, over here, it's a decreased production of uh, one of the chain. Either beta is decreased or alpha, and, and they're substituted with gamma and delta chains, okay? So basically, the main thing you're going to do is electrophoresis for special types of hemoglobin like HBF and HBA2, okay? But you got everything in the video, so just uncoil, get to hemoglobinopathies, okay? But the important thing over here in thalassemia is, remember, and I'm going to make it simple for you, all the iron studies are normal, okay, in most of the cases. So, first of all, it's normal, ferritin is normal, and transferrin is normal, okay? Or, eventually, it could be increased a bit, increased a bit, and decreased, yeah? But to remember normal, it's the best. And if you look at it over here now, so I'm going to, I'm going to again do blood smear. Now there are small erythrocytes and I have four options. So I'm going to do the iron study. Oh, and now if the iron is, is uh, decreased, ferritin is decreased and, and transferrin is increased is this one. Then you look in th this option, then you look in this option, and then you look in this. And this, this is how we're going to divide these four. Okay. So by the iron studies, by checking ferritin and transferrin and the actual levels of iron in the blood, okay? So let's get farther. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.